everybody. I am Brandon Sewell. I am the owner of Seal Pro Painting in Central Florida and the host of the Off the Ladder podcast. Uh, we exist to help home service business owners learn so that they can lead well and ultimately live life off the ladder. I'm excited to have a new guest today. Her name is Elizabeth. Uh, she is one of the owners of Pro Results Plumbing in Toronto area of Canada. Um, so they offer residential, commercial, new construction, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Kai Tech replacement? Yes, you got it. Okay, Kai Tech replacement. They've been in business for nine years. Um, again, they're located in Oakville, uh, which is like a suburb of the greater Toronto area. Um, they have 10 employees. Um, here's a quick bio on Elizabeth. Elizabeth was raised in Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and now resides with her husband, son, daughter, and their dog, Charlie. Um, Elizabeth is a fitness enthusiast, an outdoors lover, and concert goer with a dream for expansion and to be positive influence to the youth by sharing the opportunities that a Red Seal trade can offer. Um, Elizabeth is a versatile leader who has successfully transitioned from the real estate and sales management to providing plumbing services to all sectors. As the co-owner alongside of her husband, Rod, uh, she oversees the operation sales strategy of the company, which has been voted the number one plumbing company in Oakville for many years. Uh, with her year, with her years of experience in sales management and management and marketing, Elizabeth has brought innovation and technology to an industry that seemed to lack it. She has implemented the systems and processes that enhance customer satisfaction, efficiency, and quality. Uh, she has also fostered a team culture and values collaboration, professionalism, and excellence. Elizabeth is an advocate of the trades, um, and not only does the skilled trades drive economic growth, um, but they contribute to the long-term viability and resilience of our communities. Welcome to the podcast, Elizabeth. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Brandon. That's a, that's a great uh, run through my bio. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, you know, as we were talking before we started, uh, I I had the opportunity to look over your business um, on social media and see the things that you guys are doing, and it looks like you guys are having great success there and are you know growing a really professional company. And I love what you said at the end of your bio, um, just about how important the trades are uh, to our communities. Um, you know, for the economic growth. I mean, I think about it. I just made a post yesterday and I said, blue collar workers are heroes, like period. Um, I mean, because think about it. Um, without them, all of our homes, our businesses, local infrastructure would just fail, fall apart. And, you know, all of these different trades, electricians, plumbers, um, you know, the list goes on, carpentry, painters, um, they make our communities work you know, right. and, and function. And they're so important. And I feel like so often, um, blue collar workers get overlooked, um, or looked down on. And so I think there's a great need, um, for us to lift up, um, that industry, right. Blue collar work and, um, to really just, uh, help others, even a younger generation, see the value in the trades. Cause there's, <laughs> there's incredible opportunity. Yeah, and um, you, you nailed it. I, we're really big advocates on on getting the the met. I think what's important is getting the message out. The high mm -hmm. schools, um, the secondary schools, the colleges, they need to push yeah. it more. So I think the messaging is very crucial, um, and especially in Canada, like we are in a big dire need of trades because yeah. as we see in secondary schools, they push university, which is not a bad thing. Um, but let's not forget about, you know, the whole trade sector. And it's interesting because having a teenager myself, 18 years old, who's, who's just graduated and I look at job security, things have changed. AI is right. taking over. Um, and not to say that AI won't be an influence in the trades. It will, it will come as an influence, but I, I follow economics pretty carefully. I follow um, business trends. 
And I have to say, AI is not something to mess with. And right. it's coming. So I think job security is, is crucial in our world right now, um, in North America, especially like we, we, we need to concentrate on longevity and how are the kids, how are the next generation supposed to pay their bills, take care of their families, um, and, and go against the competitiveness in the business world. So I do believe, you know, the trades offers, um, job security. It offers, um, longevity, and and also you can add the business sense into the trades role like we have as well to get off that ladder as you yeah. mentioned and it is it is doable we've done it it takes time and it takes consistency and and processes yeah i mean i think it's really interesting i mean when you go on social media what does everybody talk about real estate real estate real estate and I think it's so interesting that you went from real estate into the trades and um, you're finding great opportunity there. And, you know, I think that there's this misnomer that there's not opportunity in the trades. And when I think about it, I think there's such an amazing opportunity for the next generation because of the demand um, for them to come into the trades and have incredible job security. Um, to have the ability to thrive and to do it with minimal debt. Um, I mean, think about that. We have these kids that go off to, you know, universities and they get into just massive student loan debt. And then they come away thinking they're going to come out of college and get a six figure um, paying job. And they end up landing a job for let's say 40 50,000 or you know something like that with massive debt well i don't know what the um you know the market is like in canada but i mean a person who goes to trade school um is going to pay very minimal if you know to to go to trade school and then they're going to come into maybe go into like a um uh, apprentice program apprenticeship and in three to four years, they could be making, I don't know, 60 to 80,000 a year, right? Yeah. And on minimal debt and set themselves so far ahead of their peers who are, you know, working those um, $40,000, $50,000 a year jobs and paying on student loans for the next 20, 30 years. So um, yeah. I, just, I just don't think people... Um, realize that those opportunities are there. So um, let, let's talk about, uh, you know, like I mentioned, our goal is to help home service business owners get out, of, get out of the field, get off the ladder. There's so many different ways to say it. Some in my industry of painting, they say, get out of the bucket, get off the brush. But okay. um, whatever you want to say, we want to help home service business owners create professional companies that help them to work on their business instead of in it. You mentioned that you came into um, the your husband's plumbing company, became a co-owner and um, partner, and you implemented systems. Can you speak to, um, you know, let's let's start with like hiring. Like when you came into your husband's company, what was that process like? How many employees did you have? How did you help that? Um, what did you implement there to help? Sure. So when I came over to the plumbing industry, which I had no idea, I don't know anything about plumbing, no idea, <laughs> sure. no, not, not a clue. However, it's funny how you can shift and you can trans, you know, your skills are transferable. So being a manager, I managed you know, close to 120 realtors um, in, in a pretty busy office. And I was very grateful and blessed to be mentored and taught by some of the, the most superior broker owners in all of, uh, in all of Canada. So I, I've had the training as a business background. Um, and I went into this industry just real, kind of pulling my hair out because my husband <laughs> is the complete opposite. Everyone loves Rod. He is honestly a, a genius in the plumbing world but he is only about paper he had papers everywhere he didn't have a crm system no onboarding system 
absolutely nothing. We didn't even have an administrator at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, But we were busy because people liked him. We do good work. And that's, I want to say this too. No matter what systems you have, you need to have good quality control. Like that is, if you're not good in the trade and your employees are are running wild, um, you're not going to make it. So we right. really we we really dedicate our time to quality um, hiring, uh, you know, the, the proper guys in terms of what they can do experience. But not only that, team culture as well. And I'll get into that. But when I came on board, the first thing I've done was I just did an overall picture of what I needed. And right. the first thing was getting a proper CRM system. You need a contact management system. And I can't stress that enough because your business can't be saleable. You can't sell a business with nothing to sell. You have no database, no client info. What are you selling? So I see a lot of trade companies, um, you know, they're expanding. They're so busy, but they have nothing to sell 20, 30 years down the road. What is your succession plan? Right. So. That, that was the first take on, which is a huge take on, as you probably know, Brandon, like it's not easy. I, um, I investigated, I, I probably got four or five CRM systems and um, in terms of what would work for us. And another challenge I had is because our plumbing company, we do everything. So as you said, we do big projects, commercial, residential um, Kitech, we do new cust- uh, new construction like custom homes, we do restaurants, but we also do small service. We have a small service division. So I was looking for a CRM system to cater all, all of our divisions in terms of the big projects and the small. And I found that Jobber was the most adaptable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did like how Jobber was, was very forward thinking. So in my mind is they're going to keep implementing. They're going to keep adopting new, new trends, new things. I love that. Right. And that's what we right. want. We want a forward thinking CRM system. So that was my first take on, which took, took a couple months. I dug right into it. I had to learn it. I had to customize. I did customize a lot um, mm-hmm. in order to work for us. And at that point, I needed to learn everything because we did not have a service administrator. So I had to learn the ropes. I did all that. Um, And then I also hired on an administrator, um, which I just use an Indeed program. However, I do have a lot of experience hiring um, in terms of job description. You really have to have an idea of who you're looking for. Um, And it could be either detail oriented. um, It could be good phone etiquette. So client care was a huge priority to me. Client care is number one. Um, Most of our business is referral based. So that was very, very important. Um, And then once I hired that administrator, because I knew it all, and that's another one I have, another point I have to state is that as an owner, You don't have to do it all because you can't. You have to learn how to delegate, right? But you need to know the foundation because if you don't, you don't want to be handcuffed to anyone. So if my administrator is gone for a week, I can jump right on if I I need to be, if I need to. Uh, So you should always have a grasp on the business so you're not stuck. That's, That's huge. So as soon as we hired her on, CRM training, got that going. And then another another system I, I wanted to state was onboarding. I have an onboarding system for new employees. I have orientation training. Um, I have offboarding. So it's all about having those checklists. I use Asana. It's no, it's no secret. It's easy. It's free. There's many different other um, to-do lists, like a Trello you can use. Um, you could even use a Google list uh, platform, but I use a Santa and I have it for onboarding and offboarding. Um, and also what I did implement was a 24 seven on call system. Okay. So in order to do that, because I didn't want, and that was all retention of clients. 
So I didn't want after four o'clock, if a client calls that they call elsewhere, right? Right. Um, yeah. That's a huge problem. So we retain that and our guys rotate on, on 24 seven. So I had to find another third party telemarketing company. It wasn't mm -hmm. plumbing related, but they don't have to be. And I had to implement that system into our phone system as well. And that was kind of a take on, but because I had experienced that in my management role in real estate, um, I would, it, it came a little bit easier to me, but um, th those were the, the right away take ons. I, I, I took, upon, like, I took upon myself as soon as I transitioned over. Yeah. I, you know, one of the things that you talked about is, you know, some of these, um, you know, let's just say plumbing companies, home service companies in general, they're, they're staying busy. Right. Um, but they're doing a lot of the work themselves and they're overwhelmed. Maybe they have a good reputation and maybe in the back of their mind, they're thinking, well, if I grow, if I expand, if I hire on people, I'm putting my reputation at risk or, you know, in, in their hands. And I think some business owners, they, they stay stuck in the field or on the ladder, as you would say, because they're afraid to give trust to other people and, you know, delegate that authority to their employees to make decisions and, you know, handle the day to day, um, you know, tasks and services that have to get done. Um, what would you say to somebody, a home, a, a business owner who is out there, and they're like, trying to change their mindset because i think that's a big part of it right that you have to change your mindset on how you look at that and what would you say to them how would you encourage them to take that leap and hire that first person or you know delegate more authority to somebody and give them more responsibility and trust them how how would you uh encourage them well what i what i've uh I think it's an ego thing. We got to watch our egos because I'll tell you, our administrator now, I'll give a shout out to Brianna. She's a godsend. Her, she, she, what she's doing in her role as a service administrator, she's much better than me. That's not my thing. I, I'm more of a systems back end sales girl. Um, I hired her specifically because that is her talent. She has surpass she would be surpassing me yes i can jump on and know what to do um in terms of right. the crm to take the calls but i i can't shine as good as she is no right, way yeah. there's so much talent out there that that have experience in those specific roles that we don't so i think yeah. a lot of it is an ego thing um that we think we oh no you know the world's going to fall apart if I get my hand off this and you would be surprised of the talent out there and what they can show you. So yeah, I'm really big on, uh, you know, I have, I go, I went to a conference and there was a representative that spoke from Google and it stuck with me. And it's actually in my training manual. Um, and it states it's the 80, 20 rule. So it's pretty much, you have your daily duties, you know, as every single like a bookkeeper or an administrator or a PM or whatever. And I always state, but once, once that's done, you have 20% of your day to implement something new. What's something new? Like I, I want my staff to dig deep into our business, what we're doing and let me know if we can improve anything because they're right. the ones out there doing it on a daily. Um, so I think that's really, really important is that you can't do it all. You don't know it all. Focus yeah. on what you can do well and let others help you grow. Um, and, and yes, is there going to be mistakes along the way? Of course, but you learn from mistakes. And I think it's more important how you handle the mistake. You know, like yeah. we, we, we hire apprentices all the time. We have a co-op student right now, actually, um, then he's going to be going into the youths and the trade. So we're really big on that as well in the youth um, component, but he's going to make mistakes. 
And that's mm -hmm. okay, but it's how you handle the client when a mistake does happen. I think that's that's the, um, you know, if you can avoid conflict as much as possible, but when conflict comes, it's how you handle it. So yeah, you, you can't grow if you don't have anyone around you helping. It's not going to happen um, because you can't do it all. And in the trades, it's funny because I, I come from an industry where I have to say there's a lot of realtors in our area. We're just 20 minutes from Toronto. We have one of the most um, the, the most realtors in one board is in the GTA in Ontario and Canada. Like we're sure. congested. So, but we don't, but the, the component with us is our challenge was I wanted to get the realtors to get more business prospecting sales. Well, in our field now, we have tons of business. I, like we're turning down business, thankfully. Right. But my challenge is, is getting the guys getting more guys, but growing properly um, with quality right. control. So it's a whole nother challenge for me, um, which I'm up for it, but I'm learning a lot along the way. Yeah. And I think um, when you, your values will never fail you as long as you stick to them. Right. So I think a big part of that is being clear as a business owner, what are my values? And so you hire based on those values. And when mistakes are made, you just handle them according to your values. So if you have, you know, integrity and you're an honest person, when when mistakes come up, you don't avoid them or try to shift blame. You just take accountability, you own it, you fix the mistake, and then you put a system or process in place to avoid that happening again. And I think, um, you know, business owners have to realize that um, in order to scale, you have to change your mindset on how you look at failure. You know, man, as a business owner, um, I've made a lot of mistakes myself. And, um, but one thing that I've learned, um, we're in our seventh year of business is that as long as I have the proper attitude, then there's nothing that I can't overcome and grow from. So the mm -hmm. mistakes are going to happen. Um, you know, I'm going to fail sometimes, but do I have the right attitude? And I, I think if, if business owners that are out in the field can grasp that and say, okay, you know, my, the, you know, potential employees that I will have are going to make mistakes, but can I train them to have a great attitude? Can I train them to be teachable? You know, when, when there's opportunity, opportunities to learn, are they willing to learn or are they stubborn and hard headed? And um, I think if we have that posture ourselves as business owners, that we're humble and that we're willing to, to learn from them as well, then they're going to see that and they're going to reflect it in their own, um, you know, behavior day to day as they're working as an employee in your company. Yeah. And I, I, I do believe leadership is it another, another thing that you have to learn, right? Like I, I, it, it took me a while going from a salesperson to a manager, managing people. Um, it's how you lead. You know, I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. So um, I, I, I think leadership, I lead by, you know, vulnerability to open up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't lead, we don't, my husband and I, we don't lead by dictatorship. We don't yell. We don't, that won't get you far. Um, right. You, want your guys to collaborate with you and grow with you in a company that it's it's for everyone's successes and their family successes and right. we would be nowhere without them nowhere like we mm -hmm. owe everything to our employees um right i think that's really important to understand and i i think the trades kind of struggle with that as well is that um you know <sighs> We don't we we don't have major turnover. Yes, is there turnover? Hundred percent, there is. Um, right. But I'm real. We're really big on hiring properly from the beginning, and right. and it through and having them slowly get mentorship in before throwing them out on the field on their own, um, and then having an open door policy as well. If there's any struggles happening, you know, at home and whatnot, it usually comes in the workplace. Or if there's conflict with the guys, like we nip it, we nip it in the butt. We talk about it. Um, yeah, there's still drama with guys, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> sure. Like 
my most of my staff in my old office were female, but there's still drama, there's still conflict. So I, I think yeah. it's it's being one, right? And and leading by example, um, and not leading by dictatorship. Yeah. I think you have to give people space to um to be human. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like yes. uh that's something that I think a lot uh, as a leader. I'm you know, I understand that part of just being human is like my guys are not always going to have great days. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not always going to, um, you know, be super happy and getting along when, with one another. It's just, uh, I think that's just the reality of, um, you know, human nature, you know? And so uh, what I try to do with my guys is, is, you know, explain to them like, Hey, I understand like you're, you're not going to show up a hundred percent every single day, but what is your attitude? Like, can you communicate when, when things aren't, when you guys are not getting along, just, you know, how do we talk things out? How do we get over those little obstacles? And, you know, we have that too. Um, You know, sometimes one of my guys will be like, man, I just can't stand so-and-so today. They're just, you know, getting on my nerves and, you know, so that stuff happens and you know, I think we just have to take a step back and have perspective and think like, you know, that's normal, you know, and, and how do you approach it? And I think it all comes down to perspective, your attitude, how do you communicate? Um, what is, how do you handle those situations? And I, I've had my guys come to me and say like, man, I, I really appreciate the way that you handled that situation. Like I was just having an off day and I'm I'm just thankful that you didn't just start chewing me out, but you just talked to me and communicated to me, and and I've been able to work through stuff like that with with some of my employees just by communicating. Right? Sometimes that's all it takes is just talking. And then I think um, too, um, we have to control the temperature of those situations, right? Because if we allow ourselves to be you know, overtaken with emotion or, you know, anger with our employees, well, they're going to match that level, right? They're usually going to come up and that just, that makes things worse. Um, But if we can, when they are maybe upset or whatever, if we stay cool and calm, that's usually going to bring them down because they're going to be, I think um, I've seen it like, I, I, this was months ago, I want to say like four to six months ago, I had one of my leads actually very upset with me, but he was, he had like a family member, uh, pass away. And then his mom went into the hospital and he was just emotional about all of that. And he was like getting kind of heated talking to me and I was just very calm. And I saw like a switch went off. He was like, wow, he's, he's really calm right now. And it changed the temperature of our conversation. And it works with clients too. Yeah, right? for that, sure. That same that same behavior, um, the temperament works with clientele or clientele and conflict. And yeah, I, I think leading by example and um, having the guys excited to grow with you, like that's what it's about. I, 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 I when we hire, you know, I make it really clear. I don't want to hire anyone just that wants a job. This is a career. We want to make right. sustainable and long-term careers for our guys. Um, yeah. And instead of just, you know, a job and uh, now that's, it's, we're not for you then. We're not. Um, right. And the other thing is that it, it's, it's a good opportunity for our guys. It's because you're learning every sector in the plumbing industry. So most plumbing companies where we're located don't do everything. They do maybe right. service. They only do commercial. They only do um, new construction, custom homes. That's that's really common. We do everything. So we're lucky. We're lucky or blessed, I should say, because then our guys can learn every aspect of plumbing. They become strong plumbers in every sector. And also well, with the whole COVID thing, we were never down. We've been consistent, right. thank- thankfully. Um and all the way through. So we haven't put our eggs all in one basket. Sure. Which is an important thing to mention. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So um, we were talking about hiring. We talked about like the systems and processes. 
um, being implemented. How does Jobber serve your employees? What kind of difference do you think that makes in just having um, your employees get, you know, acclimated to the business and the organization of it? How do you think that serves them and how do they like it? Oh, night and day. They, um, not, well, c- considering it was paper, <laughs> night and day, because communication's everything. Schedules change right. all the time, um, right? They change, they can t- change by the hour. A client can cancel, we can throw them into another job. Um, so in our case, night and day, our, it would have been an organizational mess without Jobber. And also mm-hmm. the messaging component that we implemented with our administrator. So, sure. our, so because our administrator is not just an, or, or, or I want to say client care as well, She's not only the liaison between the clients and us, um, mm-hmm. she's also helps my husband and I with projects, but she's there as a support system to our guys. Right. So our team members have full on support from her and she can then um, contact the client. And because I, I, I'm all, I'm a big believer in leaving in one person's hands almost, or it gets messy and sure. communication gets messy. So I think with Jobber, the biggest is is the communication and the scheduling. Like it, it was a no brainer. Yeah. yeah, I noticed um, when I mean I've I've used Jobber for a few years now, but I've had guys join my team and they came from a company who didn't have anything like we have, and they're like, "Wow, this is amazing! Oh like I know what my schedule is. I know where I'm going every day." Um, everything is right there. I know exactly what the scope of work is. I had one guy who joined my team and he was like, yeah, my old boss, he would just, you know, we'd get a text message in the morning and he'd be like, yeah, here's the directions to the house. Go down, go down to this stoplight, turn left. And it's the third house down on the right with a red mailbox. Like just, and they would, um, they would have situations where they would, you know, get up and be waiting to like find out where they were going to go, um, waiting for their, their boss to like figure that out. And, you know, with paper, like things get misplaced, things can get lost, details can get missed. Um, you know, if you have like your scope of work written down on a piece of paper and it gets misplaced and something doesn't get tracked properly, it's like, it can be a recipe for, you know, little disasters. and, And just a paper trail. Let's not forget as a business owner, the liability right? Sure. So we can track on if someone's disputing something. Uh, we work with a lot of builders and contractors as well. So if they're mm-hmm. disputing something, a client, if there's an issue, we can look back from months ago and say exactly yeah. what details. So you're, you, that's a good point you mentioned. The details inputted in the job in terms yeah. of how are they collecting the fees? We have different formats. Um, the details of access to the units. We work with a lot of property management companies. How are they getting in? Who do they talk to? Um, what they should right. bring to the job. You know, so you're right. That's huge. Um, but also the liability in the paper trail. I'm a huge, you know, legal girl. So I come sure. from that world and I want to cover our basis and we can pull up, you know, just, just a, for an example, we had a client, um, a contractor who was having trouble with a client. So the contractor is really our client, but mm-hmm. they're just taking the time. No problem. We pulled up GPS records right on the truck sure. pulled up who was on the job we pulled up who was on a jobber it's all time stamped it's it's a no brainer so that's another yeah. huge component is is the paper trail um, yeah and when you grow those systems are even more important cuz it's one thing like when you're the owner operator and you're out there in the field and and you have all that information like in your head yeah. or <laughs> in your phone Right. But when you add multiple people and you're not, you can't be in all those places, it's so important to be organized and have those things in place because that's, it is, it's how you cover yourself. Um, We had two customers uh, last week. One uh, (laughs) tried to get my guys to um, paint something that wasn't supposed to, actually on both jobs, um, the customers tried to get my guys to paint uh, things that weren't even included in the scope of work. And so like by having this, um, you know, clearly outlined, 
well, they are able to say, oh, no, here's my work order, and this is what I have here for us to do. Um, that's not included. So you're going to need to talk to Brandon if you want us to do that. And so um, it's amazing how just like little things like that, um, customers will try to, you know, get little things added in here and there. So Jobber's is huge. Um, speak to this. How so Jobber, obviously, it serves our um, internal uh, clients, our employees. It helps to make their experience better, help things run smoother. Uh, can you speak to how it helps serve our customers better and in, it um, improves that customer experience? Right. So I, I think that's another huge factor. And, you know, another thing is I say we're nothing without our employees, but we're absolutely nothing without our clients. So sure. client care is huge. We're very appreciative to our clients and we have a lot of good long term relationships. Um, so communication. Number one, number one, number one. I think communication in any business without that, it's a mess, right? Um, especially when we're dealing with so many different schedules and in our line of work as well in plumbing, you don't know what's gonna what you're gonna get until the employee gets there. Like mm -hmm. that's a big thing. Like because it's sometimes the blind leading the blind. The client has a plumbing problem. They tell their administrator. Well, our administrator might not know what it is. So she has to communicate it on Jobber. Um and once they get there, it could be a long, a longer job. It might have to be rescheduled. So, how it helps the the client, I should say, is communication. Um, they get notifications about time changes. They get notifications about when when their appointment is set. That alone um, is a game changer for us because we have pretty full days with clients. So that they also have a client hub that they can pull up old invoices and see what's going on. They can make requests. We get that a lot. So they go in their client hub and they just make a request um, for service right through their client hub. And we get a notification through our email. So everything could be streamlined without even giving us a call or an email. It can go right through a request through their client hub. And then also payments. Now we have separately, we have two forms of payments because we do mm -hmm. some really big jobs. Um, so we do use jobber payments for more minimum service. Um, so that mm -hmm. will be turned on. And that's a huge thing for our service division. Um, so mm -hmm. our clients pay by any type of visa card, um, debit, whatever they want, right, you know, right from their fingertips, um, which is a time saver as well for them. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a game changer. It's I, I think if you, honestly, we wouldn't be able to expand without it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, I, I you mentioned a lot of features that I like, but let me hit on um, jobber payments because I think something that I run into a lot when I'm talking to guys um, or gals who are running home service businesses, they're like, oh, but the fees. And it, so what I think about is the time before I used jobber. I was wow. running around having to meet clients to pick up checks um, I was having to wait for checks to come in the mail. Um, it was just a nightmare. I was like, I'm wasting some days I'm wasting, you know, three, four hours just driving around picking up checks I or, or if, I, you know, for the sake of cash flow, like if I'm waiting for a big deposit to come in or a big balance payment to come in and, you know, here I am, I need to purchase materials. I have payroll, I have overhead expenses. Like, I don't want to have to wait three to five, seven days to get my money. And right. so with with a jobber, um, they're they're solving a couple pain points for me. I'm getting my time back because I'm not having to drive around everywhere. And let's think about this, like gas prices can be insane. So like I'm saving that money. Yeah. I'm saving my time to be able to make more money, go and meet with new clients, uh, create new opportunities, network and things like that. So there's some opportunity costs there. Um, and then, you know, with the convenience of getting that money, um, you know, faster with jobber payments and more convenient, it's just, it's like, for me, it's a no brainer. I'm like, I yeah. want things to be efficient and streamlined. And if you're wanting to scale, could you imagine not having something like that and having like, let's say, you know, 20 employees and you're scheduling all this work and you're having to go around and pick up checks. It's just, you could, that could be a full-time job in itself. 
Yeah, you'll lose money. You, yeah. Something will slip and you'll actually lose money um, con concerning what you're actually spending for the payment aspect. So yeah. totally agree with you. And another, another thing with Jobber as well. So as a benefit for the client is that we work with builders, we work with um, contracting companies that let's say have 30 PMs, right? Mm -hmm. So they have different messaging, um, what their email addresses are, who's on this job. Sometimes they want to change the invoice name to this and business of that. That's a benefit for them as well, that everything is, is we can change in terms of, um, you know, invoicing or who is taking the communication aspect or them coming back to us and say, who was on that job? Who was assigned right. to that job? And you can add, we add a lot of like custom tags or um, what PM was on one specific job. And we, we kind of, yeah, there's a lot of customization you can do with Jobber. Um, it depends what kind of business you're running, but that's another plus. It's, I, I think communication is a big bonus. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, so just to wrap up that topic is like, if you are wanting to scale, if you're wanting to grow, if you're wanting to go from being in the field to having employees, you need to have a good CRM in place uh, for the purpose of being organized and efficient with your operations, having better communication with your internal customers, which are your employees, and then um, with your customers out there um, that you're serving every day, it's going to serve them better. Um, let's transition as uh, we're getting a little bit tighter on time. Um, let's talk a little bit about market sales and marketing. Um, and I, you know, we talked about this before. I wanted you to just touch on a little bit on what your opportunities have been with the HGTV in Canada. Um, but yeah, just give us a little walkthrough. I mean, you guys are one of the top uh, rated uh, plumbing companies in your area. What are you guys doing? Um, to keep your teams busy? Um, what do you feel like are some really important things for, you know, guys wanting to grow their teams? Uh, what are some really um, important marketing streams and things like that to focus on? Ah, um, so I love this topic because this is kind of my niche. I come from a sales marketing world. Um, mm -hmm. I would say my main form of marketing is networking. Networking face-to-face. Right. Yeah. -face yeah. I go to events. Um, we sponsor the real estate, Oakville Real Estate Milton Board. Um, so we service a lot of realtors and realtors like to refer. Realtors right. have connections. They're a good mm -hmm. niche to get into for everyone. Um, so I, I, I would always say network with other business owners. Network with right. people who are meeting the most people every day. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really big on coffees, drinks, dinners. Uh, we do golf tournaments, um, trade shows, anything face-to-face. -face. So that is networking. That's another, that's one, one pillar, I like to call it, that I focus mm -hmm. on. A secondary pillar is social media. Um, social media is the cheapest form of getting the most hits. And, and, and not to say you, you might not get direct leads. We do, but brand awareness. Mm -hmm. Brand awareness yep. is massive. So you might, it's, it's more sublim, sub, uh, whatever you, I can't even say that word, but it's, it's <laughs> brand awareness and selling on the back end. So you're on the, you know, the public's um, on their mind, right? Yeah. Um, not to say they're going to maybe call you from that, but they might eventually. So social media, we do ads. I do target ads. Um, there's a lot of self-learning there. i dug into it. I've been to some Facebook conferences, but there's a whole Facebook back end that you can actually learn. Um, I'm mm -hmm. huge on LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn, yeah. a lot of people are not tapped in, but I was on that years ago. Um, so we do everything on social media. We do a lot yeah. of cross marketing. So that's one aspect of it. And then there's also Google. Yeah. Can't forget Google. Now Google's not cheap. Um, we don't spend a ton on it, but we spend wisely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're careful with Google reviews and that's all based on quality control. And um, I am big on making sure our profile of business profile is always strong. Um, uh, also a website. I designed our whole website. I, well, I used a marketing company, um, but I created the content and the delivery. 
So your website is your first point of contact. They're going to check you out. Um, so I'm really big on creating like a storyboard. So what's your story? Mm -hmm. What's your yeah. image? Ours was family owned business, but professional and polished. I mm -hmm. wanted to come across that. Um, we are, we, I wanted to come across that we're more professional than not to say that the trades aren't, but they're, they're lacking, right? So mm -hmm. the industry is lacking. So I think creating what you, what your story is, delivering your message of your story and us, we service with integrity. We're a family owned business. Um, I, I do, I do believe in being personable, but having consistency, like a corporate company. That's how, I, yeah. that's how I like to run a business. So website, social media, networking. And another thing I'm going to be doing is newsletters. <laughs> I yeah, haven't they're done huge. That yet. They're huge and I haven't done that yet. And that is another form of retention for your CRM clients. And again, yeah. Jobber has different apps that you can integrate like MailChimp. That's what I'm going for. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing as well. But I would say most of our, our business is um, networking. And then with HTTV. So yes, we are grateful that we were part of many HTTV, HTTV Canada shows um, over the years. And that's just with affiliations with, um, you know, Brian Baumler, who was um, from our area in Oakville years ago. And my, my husband did some work for him years ago and, and they established a good a, a relationship. Um, and then Sebastian's from Toronto. He's on a few shows. And that was just more organic, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, that's great. We were, yeah. And then we were lucky to get into that. And um, it's it's a great form of marketing. But I would say cross-marketing and, and networking. You got to get out there. You can't be afraid to show your face and... and um, and shake some hands with people or, or even apply or go to um, your BNI meetings. I don't know if you guys have yep, BNI. We do be, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yep. Yeah. So I used to be really big in those. Um, I've kind of steered away and now I kind of just do everything, but that's right. a good point of to start. That's a good place to start for yeah, someone yeah, absolutely. Really out there and really networking and mm -hmm. to, to get your feet wet and, and how it works and to refer each other. But I think networking is number one. Yeah. 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 I think that's really important. You know, I have a business coach and one of the things that he's constantly uh, talking about is like, it's, it's networking, it's relationships, you know, who do you know, who are you connecting with? And, you know, it's like that, uh, you know, BNI principles, it's, you know, the, the giver's gain, it's, you know, it, you know, the more that you give to somebody else and connect with somebody else in your network, the more business you're going to get from them. Um, and, and, you know, you just feed off of one another and you refer one another, you connect with people who are connecting with your customers, you know? So, um, earlier you mentioned how the trades like realtors are meeting with our clients daily, you know, and making those connections and their customers need our services when they purchase a new home that needs to be, you know, ha have the whole house, uh, replumbed. Well, they need a plumber, their electrical needs to be updated, they need an electrician, they want to paint the inside and outside, they need a painter. And so realtors are a great referral um, source for us, but also other home service business owners. So networking with those other trades, you know, I refer um, a lot of people to different plumbers, electricians, um, you know, the trades that we don't do in our area through those connections. Yeah. Um I wanted to uh, touch on a couple things uh, that you mentioned while talking about that. So networking was one of them. Wanted to bring up BNI, um, Google. Um, I would say this: like, yes, Google can be expensive, but um, just m getting reviews and yeah, keeping oh, yeah. your Google My Business profile up to date um, is is huge. Now we use Nice Job integrated with Jobber. Do you guys happen to use Nice Job um, in the integration with Jobber? We haven't. Um, have I've you heard of it? it? I have, and I dabbled okay. into it, and I've only seen good things about it. But no, we have we haven't pulled that trigger. Yeah, it's it was a game changer for for me. for uh, For a few years, I was using a service called BirdEye, 
And uh, we have two locations. We have one in East Orlando, and then we have uh, the location that I'm at today, which is in uh, Titusville, which is on like this. Uh, it's Central Florida on the East Coast. Um, and so I have this location, which I started in 2020, and we had been using BirdEye. And in three years, we had only gotten 10 reviews um, using BirdEye. And um, in March of this year, we switched to nice job and just from just from march till now we have uh i think it's like 55 or 56 reviews now um and so i I love the integration with jobber because um you set it up to where when when my leads uh, close out a job and invoice it it automatically sends a review request to our client and it sends it as like a text and an email and then I train my leads to just when they're closing out the job, they'll, you know, go through a little spiel like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and close out your job. It's going to automatically send you the invoice uh, where you can pay. Um, and then you're also going to get a request to leave us a review. Uh, we do hope that you've, um, you know, been happy with our service today and received a five star experience. If you haven't, please let us know what we can do to change that before we leave today. Um, can you go ahead and open up your email and see if you got that? We'll confirm they got it. Um, try to get them to leave the review right then if they can. Um, but we really press them to to leave a review, right? And have that automated system in place, and which has skyrocketed how many reviews we're getting. Um, and, and then uh, I'll also add Nice Job has like a proven system for follow-up. So like if a customer doesn't leave a review after we send the first request, um, nice job has a, like a system in place to send a follow-up up up to four times and through their studies and their research, most customers don't leave a review until the fourth notice. And so (laughs) how many reviews are we missing out on? Cause like I was in, um, um, a, like a, um, at summit last year for jobber i was in a breakout session with them and one of the things that they talked about is like um when you have a great experience somewhere how often do you leave a review it's like almost never right (laughs) even as business owners and we know how important that is and but how often when we have a bad experience are we like I'm getting on here right now. Right. This is the worst service oh, I've ever yeah. avoided right. this place. Right. So when when our customers have a great experience, they're just it, it's not top of mind for them to like go out there and leave that review unless we're prompting them to. So that's um I've really learned that nice job's amazing. I was really hesitant to make the switch from uh bird eye to nice job, but uh, like game changer. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, touch on is, you know, you had mentioned that the opportunities with HGTV came up organically, but I wanted to just insert there that if you weren't the quality company that you are, even if that connection like with that person was there, that opportunity might not have come. So I think it's important for, um, you know, business owners just to keep in mind, like the, your company's reputation, how you do things, the excellence, the service that you offer is, has the potential to create opportunities for you that you wouldn't even be looking for. But when you present yourself professionally, when you're preparing your company for those opportunities, just because they're going to come. And I've experienced that for myself, um, like with, uh, you know, I'm a brand ambassador with Jobber um, and I've had opportunities like be on their podcast and, you know, that spiraled into other opportunities that I've had. And, you know, I, I'm like, I was just consistently trying to conduct myself with excellence in my business um, through like my social platforms. And I believe that that created opportunity for me that I wasn't even necessarily like 
looking for or expecting, right? So um, I think it's just really important for um, home service business owners to keep that in mind as they're uh, running their businesses. You you can sell as much as, you know, there's companies out there that probably spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on Google and push out all this money on sales and they get all this business coming in, but they can't retain it and there's no quality. So like first and foremost in a trade business in any business, really it's quality, (laughs) Right. You have to know your stuff. You have to have a uh, quality control. And without that, then you got nothing. Right. So hundred mm-hmm. percent. I, I do. I do love that point is that, you know, every day you're out there, you, you never know where opportunities will come from, but the better yeah. you do, the better your guys are prepped and better, you know, quality business is going to keep coming from different aspects and different sectors. And we've seen it from everywhere, yep. really. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah. Um, you mentioned newsletters. Um, we've been doing newsletters for a while now. Uh, we shifted how we were doing them about a year ago. So like um, up until a year ago, my I had been doing newsletters and they would always offer like a, um, like a discount or um, some type of, you know, uh, thing to get a sale. And um, my business coach said, stop offering something, stop trying to sell something in your newsletters, just connect, just, you know, just focus on creating relationships, let customers into your world. And so now like all of our newsletters are like, um, for example, when my wife and I uh, found out that we were going to have our second child, we put together a newsletter and sent out an announcement to all of our um customers on jobber and we have like i think there's like 1700 um you know connections in jobber and uh, so that goes out to 1700 people and we get responses back like oh congratulations you have such a beautiful family and um i sent out a thanksgiving newsletter last week um and or was that last week Uh, anyway right before thanksgiving and i had a customer that i did a quote for like a month ago And she, I tried following up with her, didn't hear back, didn't get the job. Well, then the day before Thanksgiving, um, after I'd sent out my newsletter, I get a, a email and says, Hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and use you. I paid the deposit. I was like, wait, what? I was like, I didn't even talk to you. Like, okay, but awesome. And, uh, then I get a, a text from my wife later. Hey, you're doing some work. Uh, for one of my members at OTF. And I was like, Oh, really? Who? And she told me and I was like, Wow, that's crazy. Um, I, you know, I, I tried message her, tried to follow up with her didn't hear from her. And um, she's like, Yeah, she decided to go with you after she saw your newsletter, and saw I was in it and realized that she was one of my members. And so it was like that personal connection that won us the job. And it was because she got my newsletter. <laughs> and so yeah, I, it's all relationship based. Yeah. Got it. You nailed it. You're nailing yeah. all the, points, but it's so true. It's, it's, and I think that's how it, the, the, the shift for me kind of worked <laughs> because I have to say when I came on board, I'm like, I don't know anything about plumbing. I mm-hmm. got my thing. Don't know anything about it, but I know about relationships. It's connection. Yeah. Um, it's it, if you want it to be in in the long game, right? And like, and that's another thing in the trades is that I see a lot people. This is not um, I like to say this is not a one night stand. <laughs> You're yeah. not trying to get the client for the one day. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You want longevity. You want referrals. You want years yeah. to come, and and it will it will come or you see like you service you know you do a painting job for a client in their house and they have three different businesses they have rental properties they mm-hmm. have you know affiliations with this owner and that's just how it works um, yeah so it, is, it is important to make a connection with every single person as much as you can and do the best yeah. job because you, you never know who's watching you you never know who's who really. yeah yeah that's it's huge i mean um that that's you know staying top of mind with your clients and um, realizing the connections is just a huge part of growing and scaling your business and your greatest opportunity is your clients that you've already served. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there 
Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time. So I'm going to try and wrap this up with um, a, a couple, just a couple more questions, if you, if you don't mind. Um, so let's see. I want to really quick um, just emphasize how all of this works together. We have all of these different marketing channels. I think there's one thing that really ties them together. And, you know, if you don't have this in place, it doesn't matter how many different channels you have if you're not able to capture the clients that are coming up. So, for example, Jobber has, um, you know, your client request form, right? So we take that form and we put that into all of these different channels, right? So uh, when you're when you set up your Google My Business, you want to have it there so that customers can send in that service request so you can capture their information, you know, have it on your website, um, have it in your newsletters, have it um, on your social media. Um, just speak to, if you could, for our listeners, how important that is when they're getting set up, understanding that sales funnel and capturing customer information to convert them to um, paying customers. Yeah, I think it's very important. Um, you know, I think if you Google any service company, a painting company in your area, if you, if you Google plumbing in our area, there's there's hundreds, there's hundreds. Um, so it, it's 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 important that you're on top of mind. It's important that your profile stands out. It's important that your reviews stand out. We're also Google guaranteed, which is something that someone sh you know people should look at on their own. It took a little oh, bit, yeah. but. Or Google Guaranteed, which helps with SEO as well, um, but to also make it very easy to, to get through to us. Um, because I think the consumer, especially in this day and age, they want instant gratification. Just like with marketing, yeah. they want to look at reels. They want to see videos um, more so than posts. They want quick, quick, quick. So you will lose them very quickly if they're having a hard time getting a hold of you you know, not many people even want to call anymore. Um, another thing we have on our website is a chat um, that people can actually chat. It's called Gylo yeah. Chat, and it's just a plugin. It's another thing that we we actually we get it a lot. We our, our administrators on the other end of it, and she's just mm -hmm. typing away. So a lot of people don't want to pick up that phone, or they're just too busy. So you can spend all the money you can or what you want um, with sales, but if you lose them based on just making it difficult to communicate, uh, you lost everything. That is the biggest, yeah. I, biggest component to it. Um, yeah. So I agree with you is that that's another huge opportunity with jobbers and it makes it easy for people to communicate to you quickly. And another thing we know, if we don't communicate back quickly, <laughs> we'll yeah. lose them. They will call yeah. the next guy and the next guy. So it's important to, to get them, I, I, I think, to connect quickly. There, there's a whole cycle to it, right? It's making it easy to connect, um, retaining them by good quality, and then and then using the CRM, using the the nail the mm -hmm. newsletters and to retain. It's like that cycle or the follow-up. Um, right. It's, it's everything. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'll end this by saying that it's clear that in order to get off the ladder, there's work to be done. Um, yeah. You have to document, you need to implement systems and processes. Um, otherwise, you're going to create more um, just headache and stress for yourself if you try to scale without that. And I will also say that I think I, one of my hopes for this. Um, podcast as well is maybe for some business owners that are out there to um, realize that maybe they're better you know one of my favorite uh, podcasts that I listen to is the home service expert uh, Tommy Mello um, he runs a really um, amazing business um, in Arizona they do garage doors it's he just sold it for just crazy money. I think they did like 200 million in revenue um, last year and they're just, they're phenomenal. But um, one of the things that he says is like so many technicians who want to become business owners don't realize the work that it takes. And they maybe have this like anticipation that, oh, it's just like 
going to be real. It's going to be so much easier and so much better, but it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a different work. It's different weight that you carry. And some people would be better suited to show up and work for amazing people like you and your husband and create an amazing career, advance in their career, um, you know, do the best that they can to glean from everything that you, all the resources that you have and scale up and grow inside of your company and help the company grow. Um, because I think people have this like crazy expectation that it's just going to be so much easier. (laughs) And I'm like, being a small business owner is incredibly challenging. And I tell some of my guys, I'm like, look, if you want to go start your own business, go for it. And if you find out how hard it is and you don't want to do it anymore, and they're a great person, of course, you can come back and work here. right? Right. But, um, yeah, I just, I, I think that it's important to to note that it's a, you do have to have a lot of these things that we're talking about in place to run a successful um, service company that offers amazing workmanship, customer service, and the whole whole deal. So, um, uh, we'll wrap this up. Um, one question that I usually just uh, leave uh, our audience with is, "What is your next big thing that you're trying to accomplish?" as a company and what are you doing to get there? Hey, so next big thing. It sounds it's the newsletter campaign is actually a bigger take on than I think most people would know. So I want to start a re- retention program and that is newsletters, um, communications with our, our current clientele with also bringing in databases from, you know, I'm part of the chambers of commerce and the realtors and other networks. So that is what I'm actually focusing on. It sounds kind of juvenile, but it's actually a big take on, as you probably know. It is. Yeah, it's huge. Um, That's my next um, take on, but also I want to, um, I'm digging into more of the youth youth uh, co-op programs a little bit more and understanding it because there's not enough education at all for us. I know in Canada, Mm -hmm. there's not. Um, So I've started dabbling into, you know, trying to be a a board member of the colleges in town. Okay. Um, Also, I would love to start more of a, a mentorship program. Yeah. I'll get to that, but there, there is, I, I, that's another um, take on that we're, we're trying to get on board with is just educating ourselves more on what's available. Grants, there's grants out there. Um, the proper ways to get them over without um, dabbling into our ratios through the youth programs. There's, there's a lot out there that we're just not aware of. I'm not aware yeah. of. I'm aware sure. of a bit of it, but I, I'm, I want to get more educated in that, in that, um, in that front. So I got a sales program that I want to dabble in and re- create and, and, um, and I think that will give us a lot more business for expansion. And then also another program in order to, you know, bring more people over good quality people we can mentor um, to keep up with that business. Yeah. So yeah. I would say those are two things I'm concentrating on right now. Awesome. Well, I have no doubt that you guys will uh, t- tackle it head on and accomplish those things. It, it's amazing to hear what you guys are doing there. And uh, for everybody listening to the podcast, I hope that you gained some incredible value today. There is so much that we talked about, so much that you can get started with implementing. And that is the big thing that you need to understand when you're looking to get off the ladder. It's one thing to hear these amazing podcasts, to hear from amazing business owners like Elizabeth and Rod, but really where the rubber meets the road is when you decide that you're going to implement and you're going to take action on what you're listening to, because unless you do that, you don't have a chance. So thanks for listening to the Off the Ladder podcast. Um, Please like, subscribe, um, share this podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and we'll see you next time on the next episode. Take care. 